Today we're diving into 10 brand new VS Code features that are absolute must-knows for any developer looking to stay on top of their game. Trust me, you don't want to skip these. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. Alright, let's get started. Up first on our list is floating editor windows. This was a feature that was released back in November of 2023, so it hasn't been out very long. So the easiest way to create a floating editor window is to just click on one of your editor tabs and pull it out. This creates a new VS Code window that you can edit code in. We can move this window around, resize it, and even drag other editor tabs into it. We can do a split screen. So now if you want to edit code on multiple monitors, it's totally possible with this new feature. Number two on our list is the Hey Code command. This is a new voice command added to VS Code with the help of some extensions, and it allows you to just say Hey Code to open up the Copilot chat. So let's try that out. So the first thing we need to do is install the Copilot extension. So we're just gonna to come to extensions and type in Copilot, and here's the extension. So I'm just gonna click on install. And then we also need VS Code Speech. It's created by Microsoft and I'm just gonna click install. Once both of those extensions are installed, we're gonna see a new icon for the chat. We'll click on that and here we can see it's asking me to sign in. You may already be signed in, but in my case I'm not, so I'm just gonna click on sign in and choose allow and then I'll finish signing in in the browser. Okay, we can see that I have access to the GitHub Copilot chat. I should note that GitHub's Copilot is not free, and I think it costs me around $10 a month for access to it, but you should get a free trial to try it out. Now that I'm signed in, we just need to enable it in the settings. So I'm just gonna hit command comma and type in keyword activation. And here we can see accessibility, voice, keyword activation, controls whether the phrase, hey code is recognized to start the voice chat session. Here it's turned off, and we have a couple of options. We have chat in view, quick chat, inline chat, and chat in context. And as I hover over each one of these, we get a description that tells us what it does. So I'm just gonna choose inline chat and close that out. And now we can see that I have a microphone in the bottom corner, listening to Hey Code. Now let's open up a file. This one should be fun. And so now if I highlight line number nine, Hey Code, what does this line of code do? And here we can see that we get a description of what does this line of code do? Pretty neat, right? This can definitely speed up your development process. Number three on our list of features is sticky scroll. Let's go over those now. So the first one is the Explorer sticky scroll. So to make sure we have that enabled, we're gonna open up our settings and type in tree sticky scroll. And here we can see that setting and we're just gonna turn that on. Now in the Explorer, as we open up directories and scroll down, we can see that the directory path stays at the top. And as I open more directories, we can see that the sticky scroll gets a little longer. This works great in very large projects with deeply nested structures. I can quickly see exactly what the path is to the file I'm looking at. The second one is the terminal sticky scroll. So I'm just gonna come back to the settings and change tree to terminal. And here we can see the top option is the terminal sticky scroll. I'm just gonna enable that. And now if I open up the terminal, and I'm just gonna type in ls, dash L. As I'm scrolling, we can see the command at the top. I can see this being helpful when you run multiple commands and you're just trying to figure out what the output of a specific command is. Number four on our list is the multi-diff editor. It allows you to view changes across multiple files in one scrollable view. So let's check that out. So if I come over to source control, we can see that I have changes in three files and we have a new option that says view changes. We can now see all of the changes across all three files. This will definitely speed up things when I'm getting ready to commit code. Number five on our list is triggered breakpoints. You can now set breakpoints that are automatically enabled when another breakpoint is hit. Let's see how that works. So here I have some TypeScript code, and let's say I want to break on line 27, but only if name is Joe. So I'm just gonna say name Joe, okay? And then, I want to break on line 30, and we're gonna add a triggered breakpoint. And then here we can say, I wanna wait for breakpoint line 27, and click OK. So now, when I'm debugging this code, if name is Joe, we're gonna break on line 27, which will then enable the breakpoint on line 30, and we will break on that. Now I do realize I could have typed in name equals Joe on line 30, but this is just for demonstrating how this would work. Number six on the list is native paste support in the file explorer. We've all been there. We've tried to copy and paste a file from the file explorer into VS Code and it didn't work. So now if I come and click on a file in the file explorer, I can copy that file 
come to VS Code and paste. It's gonna ask, are you sure you wanna paste this file? And I'm gonna say yes, and there it is. It's a basic feature, but I'm definitely excited about this. Number seven on the list is multi-document highlighting. I think it'd be a little easier to show this than to explain it. So here I have two files that are open side by side, and we can see if I highlight hero over here, hero is highlighted throughout this document but it's not highlighted on the left side. Now we can make it highlight both documents. To do that, we'll just open up the settings with command comma and type in occurrences. And here we can see occurrences highlight and it's currently set to single file. We can now change this to multi-file. And now if I highlight the hero service, we can see that it's highlighted in both documents. Number eight on the list is the incoming and outgoing changes. If I come over to source control, I can see this new view incoming slash outgoing and on the top we have origin slash main and on the bottom is main that's our local if we expand the drop down we can see the changes that are coming in from the remote if we sync and if we expand the bottom drop down for our local branch we can see the changes that we would be pushing up this new view now summarizes exactly what's going to happen when you click sync changes number nine on the list is another basic feature that i'm probably a little more excited about than i should be we can now change the position of the activity bar. So back in VS Code, if I right click on the activity bar, we have this option, activity bar position, and I can hide it or remove it to the top. I think this view is a little more cleaner, especially on smaller devices. It gives you just a little extra space when you're writing code. Before I get to my last feature, if you feel like I'm providing value, consider hitting the like button down below. Also, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, consider subscribing. It would definitely help the channel out. And now on to our last feature, number 10, maximize the group editor. So here we are in VS Code, and we can see that I have two files open side by side, the HTML file and the TypeScript file. Now we've always had the option to double click on the tab to make it bigger, and then double click to make it smaller. Now we have a new keyboard shortcut, Command K, Command M, that maximizes that tab. And we can see in the top right corner, we have a button to toggle Maximize Editor Group. And if I click on it, it goes back to the split screen that we had before. Now, if I open up another file, so I have two files on the right and one file on the left, if I maximize the right side with Command K, Command M, we can see that the entire group was maximized. And then we'll just click on the button and it goes back to the way it was. We can also just hit the keyboard shortcut, Command K, Command M, to go back to the way it was as well. This can work great when you're working on a small screen and need to maximize space temporarily. If you found these features helpful and you're looking to dive deeper into mastering VS Code, check out this other video on using Git in VS Code. It'll complement this video perfectly. Also, I've just launched a weekly newsletter that covers the same content that you'll find on this channel, except it's in bite-sized, easy to digest pieces, perfect for your busy schedule. It's on my website and the link is in the description below. Subscribe now to stay ahead on your developer journey. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.